Okay, so I am getting my palette ready and I cleaned off my palette reluctantly because I had some paint that was still wet. Um, it had a skin on it when I started digging around in it, but I wanted to not waste paint because I'm so thrifty. But I really encourage you to put clean, fresh paint out on your palette. Of course, my neighbor is mowing his yard and he keeps turning the cutter on and off and on and off. So hopefully you're not getting too much background noise in the video. Just another example of how many obstacles there are to creating. So I have my earbuds in, trying to keep the cord out of the way. Not sure how much battery I have left with the cord in, but we'll see. I'm going to push through because that's the name of the game with this. So let me tell you, I have uh, titanium white. I have raw sienna, yellow ochre. I really only need two yellows. So if this was down to the wire, I would probably choose yellow ochre and cad yellow light because I see so much warmth in this painting, I decided to put some extras out to just see what works. I liked the Naples yellow in the Sargent study, and I definitely, with all the brass, see raw sienna, but I also see some really bright spots, so I'm thinking the cad yellow light might be um, a good option in a few places. I have vermilion, and Venetian red or burnt sienna, just like we used in the Sargent painting. I've squeezed out some permanent rose because with flowers, sometimes there's a beautiful pink color that's difficult to mix with just the, the primary type red. I have Prussian blue. I also have some ultramarine marine blue, which is the color I'm used to using. I don't know how much of either of those I'll need. I also squeezed out phthalo green or viridian because there's some turquoise in this painting and you can't mix that color that I know of. I've never been able to. So this is my palette. Again, it is yellows, reds, and a couple of blues. I don't have any raw umber. Uh, I'm going to try to make it without the raw umber by just mixing complements to get my browns that are in these shadow colors. All right, I'm going to try to begin from the back of this painting and work my way to the front and thinking about what colors I might use. So I'm gonna start with the sky color. I'm using a small palette knife to mix with instead of a brush so that I can keep all my color on this glass palette. If this is your first time to join in, I use a shadow box with glass and a piece of gray palette paper underneath it so that all my colors will register against this gray color and not appear too light or too dark. Prussian blue is really strong, so I'm gonna just take a tiny tidbit and begin to mix in some blue. Now, it has a definite twang to it. It is, really doesn't have any red in it at all. I don't, I can't, I have a hard time telling. I always feel like Prussian blue goes a little to the green side. I may be wrong on that, but. So here it is a little stronger with just Prussian blue and white. And that is definitely not what I see on the painting. So I'm gonna mix a tiny speck of red in it and warm it up just a bit and see what happens. You know what blue and red make a kind of a purplish color. I think that's too much. The sky, the little bit of sky that I can see through is mostly clouds is, uh, that's a little closer to what I see. Sky, uh, Shirley used to teach us that sky usually has either burnt umber in it or a little speck of burnt umber or a little bit of alizarin crimson in it. So since we're using vermilion, I've just used a little bit of vermilion. So I'll hold my palette knife up Again, I'm trying to make myself use this Prussian blue. I'm really most comfortable with ultramarine blue. But I think, again, these are studies. So I'm trying to try some different things. I'm trying to try. My goal is to try different things and see how those perform. It's real easy to get in a rut with your colors and just use constantly use all the same colors. 
As the sky moves down toward the flowers, it seems to get more purple. So I'll feel pretty confident about mixing up more of a purplish color to use in the clouds and in some of those flowers. So that's probably enough for that little bit of sky. There's a few areas of blue over to the right of the painting that feel are fairly gray. So the opposite of blue is orange. So I may mix a little of this burnt sienna color in to kind of gray the blue down because it's the opposite. And that's doing that. You'll notice that I squeezed my white out in a long strip and that helps you keep your white pile clean because you're just pulling off the end. So there's a little bit more of a lavender, gray down blue color. Brighter, purpler, lighter, and then there's a, a more of a purpley gray color in the shade and on the right side shadows. All right, the next main color that I see is the shade. And again, I always start with white and I'll mix in for light colors especially just a little bit and I'm gonna go with the yellow ochre. And I'll gradually, see that's pretty strong, but I'll gradually add more into it to darken it because this is a light color. If it were a dark color, I would start with the pure color and add to it, closest to. Um, it's a little bright, and I notice it, especially on the right-hand side of the shadow, it is not a bright yellow, so I believe it probably has the opposite in it, which is purple. So I'll pull a little bit of purple out here for the shadowed areas, and I probably should have made a little bigger pile of purple here. Let me go ahead and do that so I have it. Prussian blue and vermilion. Make me a nice big pile of purple here. So I think I see some of that in her dress and maybe in the flower somewhere. All right, so just a smidge of that. I have a paper towel or a rag in my hand all the time so that I'm constantly wiping and cleaning and not contaminating my colors. Then the lightest light. Typically I go that way and get lighter, but I didn't do that, that time, this time. I see in her dress this cream color, but it's a, a darker shadowed color of that. So I think I'll go ahead and mix up. Let me just do opposite here, get my yellow ochre, mix some purple in with it, and make a darker version. here and then pull that out a little bit more purple there we go that looks like a good shadow color again it's just yellow ochre with a little white and some purple in it to make that nice shadow color in her dress that's perfect so I have two options or several options here. I can go <clears throat> more yellow this way. I can go, I see that in there. I see it more purple in areas. Uh, down towards her knee, it's a lot more yellow. So I have a good, good range of colors to use. Right now, I'm not thinking about any of the designs on that dress or any of the details on the flowers. I just wanna squint my eyes and really look through the squint and I see this color around her waist, in her bodice, on her arm, down her dress. I see more of this closer to the bottom of her dress. So I wanna, I wanna put the, we're gonna mass in the general tone. Also the legs of the table are just pretty much yellow ochre. There's a few bright spots in there. But just so that I have a large enough pile of color here, I'm gonna mix up a little bit more. All right, um, the color on the floor of the porch is this, 
and it's got some cool purple tones in it, so I already have purple here. And remember, purple goes two ways. It can either be really a warm lavender purple uh, when it has more red in it, or it can be a cooler periwinkle color. So you probably wanna have a, a good little pile of that. I see that quite a bit dancing around in here. All right, so the other main color I see is the flowers on the left-hand side. So let's go with a Prussian blue. And I ask myself when I'm mixing a green if the green I see is a yellowish green or a bluish green. And is it a bright chromatic green like a green apple or is it a earthy green? And this is an earthy green, but it leans toward the blue side. So I'm gonna use some, instead of using a bright yellow, which would give me a, a Granny Smith apple color, I'm gonna use a dull yellow ochre. Let's see what happens. Might not work, but yes, I think it will work. This is giving me definitely a bluish green. And in some places, I see a turquoise color. So here, I've already got the phthalo green or viridian. Either of those will work. And I can move in between these. The first is kind of a gray down version of a green. This whole left side is very muted. And so that's our goal is to make this first layer a very muted layer. Make sure you're mixing enough paint because the worst thing is to have to stop and remix color as we go. Um, because I see some lighter areas, I wanna go ahead and pull my greens down one more level. Um, so I wanna have a couple of values of this green. You see this is a yellower green. And I see that. And this is a bluer green. Definitely very bright and chromatic. We may not see this, this color anywhere, but I do see it on the leaves on the right. So I'm in the middle value here. So if this reads too bright at any given time, blue-green on the opposite end of the color wheel is going to be orange-red. So the probably a little of this uh, vermilion mixed will help tone that down so it's not so crazy bright. There we go. See, that grayed it down. And it's scary to stick that red in there because it just seems like it wouldn't be a good thing to do. But that's that grayed it down just right to where it's not so, so jumpy outy. All right. Okay, on this first layer of paint, I'm gonna use um, filberts. And the reason I decide, when I decide to use filberts, it's usually because the surfaces are round and organic and it just makes a softer, more of a modeling type of a stroke to me. If I were doing, when maybe when I do the railings or something, I would mix, uh, change to a flat brush that would make a nice sharp flat edge. These are ivories. I've dipped them in a little bit of mineral spirits pretty much leaving my mineral spirits closed, but you will hear me swishing around a little bit as I switch from color to color. I have uh, a good selection of these that I'll get back out. I wanna make sure that they're clean and I'm not mixing in any brush cleaner or anything. Again, like I said earlier, we're gonna start from the back and work our way toward the front. When I work on the sky, I've already got all this blue down here, so um, you can see when I lay that on how, how much more green it is than what's already on the canvas. Really greenish. So I'm going to come back up here to the, to the blue and I might just grab a little tiny bit of ultramarine because I already have that out on my palette. I just like the brightness of ultramarine. See how that's not as dull. I'm just gonna look at where the blue, Lillian has just blue like right around in here, little bits and pieces. 
And then most of it is honestly, is just the clouds. And the clouds are mostly white. They've got a little bit of yellow in them, so you could dip in a little tiny bit of your, of your yellow ochre in a few spots. But you have to be careful because too much yellow is gonna mix with the blue and turn green. Also, when I'm choosing my brushes, I'm thinking about the size of the canvas that I'm working on. And this is a nine by 12, a small canvas. So I don't, this um, four is about as large as I want to deal with. Shirley used to tell us to make little X's and that just keeps you kind of painterly, keeps you from just painting a barn. You can put it on any way you want to, however feels comfortable to you. But the little X's just keep me loose and keep me from starting out trying to color and book and fill in the lines. And so you notice I'm painting over my charcoal lines. I don't want to be in that coloring book mode right now. And this is my first stab at it. So once I get some other colors on here, I may decide that the sky needs brightening up a bit. Now you see I'm putting pure white on and I don't, it's too flat and chalky. So it definitely needs a little smidge of warmth in it to register right. I'm gonna go all the way down, pretty far down. It's kind of hard since we have the blue tone on here to tell uh, where we've got covered and where we don't. But since we love painting wet and wet so much, we can just paint right back over it. Now I'm going over here to get some of this yellow, which is really nice. And remember, we're gonna correct this later, so this first stab is just to get the overall um, tone in. To get it masked in, I could brighten this just a bit more with that yellow, yellow ochre and white. It already feels good just laying this paint in. I haven't really gotten very far, but just getting it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and move down since I have this on my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and move down onto this porch. That's one of the brightest spots on here. And I'll, while we'll probably adjust that some, I'm gonna go ahead and record it. And remember, you get lots of chances with this. Your first stab doesn't have to be the end all be all. This is a little bit lighter right here. And do I see it anywhere else right now? Perhaps a little bit more of the yellow ochre in it down here next to her dress. I see some dappled light. I'm just gonna make a place for it, even though I know I'll go back in there. Sort of like the spaces between tree branches. You have to go back in and put sky holes usually have uh, clips, I forgot to mention those, to keep my sketchbook pages from curling. I'm wiping my brush and I'm gonna go ahead, while I have this color, and record these the lights of these blinds. I'm gonna paint them in first and then go back and affect the texture. But um, right now, I'm sorry I can't, I don't have my video, uh, palette videoed for you, but right now I'm scooping the paint up as if it were, this brush were a spoon, and I'm laying it in kind of heavy. I'm not going to worry too much about the face. I'd like to get her skin tone masked in today so that I can soften all this together. But the brightest area is right around her. And I've chosen to lay that in first because my brush is pretty clean. I'm scooping, I've almost used all my white up. So this is a reminder to you to be sure you mix plenty of paint. So you're not constantly having to stop and remix. Again, we get more than one chance with this, but 
if you can get it in right the first time, it's so much easier. You can get it in pretty close to the right value. Uh, let's see. It gets a little more grayed as you go up here, that, not that much. I'm holding my brush this way, not this way, um, because it's making me, I'm actually about three feet back because I have my palette in front of the easel so that I can't get too close to it. Because I'm seeing the painting totally different right here than I would be if I was really within a foot or six inches of the, of the painting. is actually going on pretty fast. This whole segment here on the side is the edge of the window seal, and it has the purple color in it, the opposite of the yellow, so it's the shadow down version. That's probably a little too dark. But remember, we get a chance to adjust these values. Wiping my brush, I'm going to lean a little more towards yellow down here on, let's see, this is just down from her waist. Much more yellow down here and light yellow. The purple and raw sienna color down here. And you might wonder why I'm doing the shade first. Well, if I get her all painted beautifully and then I try to go back around her, which I probably will do some correcting, but it's just so much easier to work from the back toward the front than to try to come back in later and correct and come around your little perfect face that you've got drawn in. The shade up here is quite light. It's a purple color. It's actually, the I guess, a little piece of curtain or something up here. I can go ahead and get that in. It's just white with a little bit of purple. Then I can scumble some white with yellow mixed in it over the top. Wiping my brush, wiping my brush, coming back over here because I did not extend these blinds all the way over and they do run off the page. So let me go ahead and get those all the way over. There's also some beautiful light right down here behind her body bottom of the shade which comes down below a little I have it too high so I need to bring that down a bit top of the railing it's really light and remember this is just our first stab she looks like she has a humpback let me go in over this dress same over here. So I can come back in and paint back over that later. Don't be afraid of losing your drawing. It's just no way to live, being you know, afraid. Um, make sure you 
Do the best you can on this first go around and then correct yourself. No worries, we can do it. So again, the bottom of the shade is actually lower down below her waist down here. And just a feeling of these blinds, really, no. We can go back in and do some better effects on those later. It'll be kind of fun to do that. But Come in over this figure. Don't piddle around this figure and be scared to get close to it because you'll have trouble later with it. All right, I'm going to redraw this just a bit here. Really goes up higher. And I love reassuring myself that this is just the first layer. So don't worry too much about it. I really love that first um, stroke I put on right here. That was so bright. And I know I'm gonna have to do that over and over to get it really light, because that's what's so beautiful about this painting, is that feeling of, of warmth and glow. Just can't get it the first go around. All right, anywhere else I think I see that pretty glowy color. It's bluer down here. I'm gonna go ahead and just get it, get it off my brush. The window seal, the edge of the curtain. Actually, I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush, a smaller Filbert, and see if I can just run a line down this window sill. Again, I've gobbed the paintbrush up. I'm sitting so far back that my hand's a little wobbly. I don't have anything to lean on. This longer Filbert lets you really Lay some paint on top, though. All right, I'm going to switch to another brush. I'm going to introduce some green over on this right side. Remember, we mixed up a yellow green. And this is just going to be a pretty dark, um, a blurred first attempt. And this, these, this is all behind the railing, so I probably would have been wiser to have put that in afterwards, but I didn't, so. If your green starts to get too, um, like, flat, like mint or sea foam, you just need to add a little bit of yellow in it to brighten it up a bit. And I'm adding a little bit of this cad yellow because it, it feels brighter to me down here some places. And probably this first stab is too dark. But we'll correct it, right? Is there any green down here? Maybe a bit. Just kind of dancing around in there. And I want to mass in some of this green gray color over here. And remember we said when when green is too bright and you want to gray it a little, you add the complement which is red. So, I'm going to add a little bit of that. My color is a little too dark. Now I've added a little too much. Um This part's kind of fun, because you just want to make a grayed in, blurred version of what you see in front of you. No real strong detail. But a feeling for flowers back there. That green gray is also down here under the table a bit. It gets darker under here. It's very dark. So I'm mixing up 
Prussian with a little yellow ochre. I'm going to come in here and try to lay in a little bit of that darker value. It's not going to take right now, but that's all right. Right next to the um, flower pot, there's a real dark, dark green. Let's see if we can make it work. And remember, when you're trying to get your green darker, put some, there we go. If you have to put a little red in it, that will darken it and make it a little browner or a little bit more of an organic green instead of so chromatic. That's a pretty chromatic green. Next to this leg is some dark. And I'm going to add some red with my dark green, which is Prussian blue and yellow ochre. I'm going to add some red in there to warm it up a bit to make a, a kind of a brown here. There we go for the side of that table. And remember, this is not, this is, this stage is not really that gratifying because you're just massing in, trying to get the overall shape and value of the whole thing to start with. This is warm. This is warmer. So the red, see, is helping warm it up. Kind of an orangey red color under here. Under the bottom of the pot, it's definitely warm. It's a little too warm. Yep. Here's some warmth. And again, I'm not too concerned of, as to whether this is exactly the right color. If it's the right value, we can make adjustments. All right, anywhere else? Okay, over here I've got some reddish brown. I'm gonna grab a little of this Venetian red along with this green and red mixture over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of this dark shadowy or whatever this is down here in the bottom. It feels really mushy right now. It doesn't feel very attractive. It's not at a stage you really want anybody to see it. That's okay. Got to get something on the canvas to have something to work with. The worst thing you can do is just be overwhelmed and stop right now. You just got to get this thing covered. I wish someone had told me to just hurry up and get the thing covered because then you can start making progress once you get it all covered. So I've got a little bit of that dark on my brush. I'm going to go ahead and pop a little of that in there. Over here, there's some of that dark green I'm going to go ahead and pop some of that in. I don't know what this is over here, but pop a little bit of that in there. Think about X marks when you're trying to do this foliage. I know there's a video this week on that um, streamlined video with somebody that mentioned foliage. So look at different people and how they handle their brush and the way they lay foliage in. That'll help you a lot. All right, I've stopped and looked at it because you can get so busy working on it that you've not really aren't looking at it as a whole. <clears throat> so um, I want to go ahead and mass in this area where the flowers will go. And I'm going to do that in kind of just a green gray color. It's going to be darker here close to the pot where the flowers start to grow out. A little bit of a greenish gray on the pot. And I don't care if that all melts together right now, that's okay. There's some of that greenish gray color. I've almost used all my white. 
There's a little bit of that greenish gray color over here, more under the table. Right in here over the railing. In here. Again, the goal is just get this thing covered. A little bit of greenish here. All right, I'm gonna switch brushes now. I have a pretty good selection of brushes out here. That's a just a reminder to you to um, make sure you have your brushes out so you're not scrambling around, stopping your flow and looking for things. I'm gonna go ahead and um, just lay a little bit of this warm raw sienna color on the table. That's pretty bright. So I'm gonna go over here and get a little bit of that purple just to mix with it. I think my angle is too sharp there. Yep. I don't want that jumping out too much right now. And I did move to a smaller brush here, so I wanna be careful. I don't wanna to get too carried away. Do I see that anywhere else? I see some of that raw sienna color bouncing around down here, not that much. <laughs> And the legs of the table right here are a raw sienna color. It's easier to pull a stroke up than it is to go down. Now that's way too strong. There's one in the background. There's another leg right here. So I'll go back in there and mush that up a little so it's not so strong standing out -y so much. This is definitely not green. This is definitely a nice, rich brown color. So I will need to adjust that at some point. But I'd like to really not have to go back down and do much more here. This is not the focal point. And this should kind of just come through the squint so that you're not dilly-dallying with it too much. So I want a warmer brown right now. I'm kind of making a mess on my palette, but I want a little warmer color for right here than what I had. That's not quite it, but. I want to go ahead and get that stroke to register right now. Then we're greener over here by the pot. The pretty dark little note right there. I'd like to get that in right now so that it sticks. A lot of this is up and down, up and down because of the greenery and stuff that's laying in here. This is warmer down here. I can go ahead and I'm probably starting to dilly-dally too much here, so I'm going to stop myself. I can go ahead, while I have a little bit of this brown on my paintbrush, I can go ahead and mass in a little bit of this warm color on the brass pot. And really, my brush is too small. So I need to move back to a larger brush. And all my brushes are dirty, so I've got light colors on them. This would be a good time to stop. All right, so I took a break and looked at it for a minute. I wanna go ahead and start massing in some of her dress. So I cleaned up my colors and I mixed up some green grays, some purple grays, some yellowish grays. And they are all the same colors I was already using this is just the purple mixture, and it has a little um, yellow in it. This is the redder purple mixture, and has pulled it out with some yellow here. This is Prussian blue and yellow ochre, and then I added white, 
with a little bit of red in it because red is the opposite of green just to dull it and then i did go ahead and mix up a little bit of skin tone here which is just yellow ochre and vermilion i grabbed accidentally a little bit of naples yellow so it's brighter right here um, there's not a lot of real bright on her skin tone i've mixed up some purple here because her arm has a lot of cool tones in it the back of her neck under her chin so I'm gonna mask those in real quickly, but I wanted to stop and show you my palette. I did kind of clean off because I'm moving from the background now into the dress. Probably go back and do some of the flowers, um, just blurs of the flowers in the pot and hollyhocks, just so that those can be a kind of a background level or layer. I also wiped my brushes really good with just a paper towel. I haven't used any mineral spirits to this point. I'm just laying in kind of some muddy colors, so I'm not too worried about how clean my, my brushes are. I do want to remember the dark ones and the light ones. Um, I am going to, and you might ask me <clears throat> why I decided to tone this canvas blue when I looked at the original one of the main mother colors I see kind of glowing around in it is a bluish color, kind of moving around throughout the painting. The sky, it's on the shadows of the, of the railing. It's uh, coming around uh, on her dress a little bit. So I just felt like that was a good color. I'm probably gonna paint over most of it, but if I wanted to paint thin in some areas and let the blue show through, it would be a really easy thing to do. So I'm just gonna start on her shoulder, I think, and ask myself, does that feel warm or cool, shadow-wise? It's pretty warm right here. Um, as it moves down her arm, it gets cooler and bluer. It may be a bit too dark, but that's all right. I'm gonna adjust that as we go. And again, I. I remind you that this is not a stage of the painting that I'm really excited to show people. It is very non-gratifying, but if you will do your due diligence and get these shadow colors laid in and get it covered so that when you do come back in to work, you have something to compare it to and when we, we uh, oil it in and re-wet again, you're just gonna really enjoy it a lot more. If I could get the dress done today, and I don't know if I will, but I I'd like to, just the background colors of the dress, then I'm gonna glaze that print back in. This is very much like Sargent's painting of Lady Agnew that I did a study of. And I painted the chair with all these shadow colors. And then I came in later and glazed the flowers over the chair. And all those colors were already sort of there. And when I laid the, the prints over, it didn't look like the flowers were pasted on. They looked like they kind of melted in and were printed in the fabric and that's the tricky part so i want to put some purple here in this shadow but it's a brighter version than i've mixed up so i'm popping in a little bit of white to lighten it because this is this is a pretty more of a lavender color here i don't have it it's the color i have mixed up is really dull and I think it may be because I'm using a brush that has some warm color on it. I wanna to try to keep my, my cools pure. So back to the red, vermilion, and white, and a speck of blue. A speck of blue, did I say, did I say that? I got way too much blue, as always. And then it's really warm right in here as we go up towards the book. This is cooler 
This is really blue and cool over here. So I'm gonna overshoot it and just put blue there. This is bluish. And right now against this brighter blue, it's not reading very true. So it's hard to get it to, um, I'm probably gonna have to do two layers on this dress and come back and do the, the print later. That's all right. We just try to do the best we can with what we've got. Move it to a clean brush to see if I can get a little bit better color here. The back of her dress is pretty cool down here. It gets warmer as it goes down to the bottom. There's a little bit of a greenish hue in a few places here, um, under her hand here is kind of greenish. Maybe through this whole section is a little greenish. I saw some green there. I definitely see green here, but I'm probably gonna have to come back in and repaint that collar. The back of her dress is a real warm tone, yellowish, almost peachy, I guess, from her arm. And then down here on the bottom, there's a lot of yellow ochre. and almost a peachy color down there as well. I'm gonna borrow some of this flesh tone. Yeah, that's pretty. Put a little bit of that right there. A little bit of it there. Again, it's kind of a muddy mess. But don't despair. It's what it's supposed to look like at this stage. So don't quit on me. Um, back to my darker bluish brush. And right next to this arm is a really dark note. It's what makes the arm pop. I'll try to get that in. It goes all the way down into the book. And then there's more of a reddish note under her hand. Let's see. There's the top of the hand, there's the fingers, and here's that shadow color. Comes up around the hand. Some of that down here, really reddish. So I've used uh, vermilion and blue to make this red tone. I'm not too concerned with getting that exactly right, but if I can do a few of these dark notes, I will. And then we'll go back later and darken those where we need to. This may take us several weeks, I don't know. Again, it's a study. So we really have no idea how long she took to paint it. Some of these guys could have taken a year. Maybe they did it in one sitting um, we have no idea. So, we'll just do the best we can with it. And some dark notes on this book. So while I have this dark red, I'll go ahead and pop those on. And actually some reddish color in her hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that in. It's real glowy and orange right here on the side of her hand, but I'm not quite ready for that. So there's some red over here under her hand. Again, if you'll work with your, whatever's on your brush, if you'll make yourself look around and see where else you can pop that, it'll save you a lot. I'm gonna get another clean brush and lay in the red on that book. 
and it is vermilion with a little Prussian blue for the darks, a little Prussian blue. Remember how powerful that color is. And we can go back and adjust this as we need to. Using a big brush. Make yourself use as big a brush as you can stand it. I laid it on there pretty heavy. That's a pretty focal part of the painting. Just make sure you don't have any real hard edges on it that you can't get off later. All right, I did swish off my two small filberts and I'm going to lay in the skin tones and I clean those off because I wanna to try to keep this color clean and different, not muddied like the rest of it. Um, that's too light. Her face is really in shadow, partially. There we go, that's better. Still not quite dark enough. There we go. And like we did the Sargent painting, just squint and think about blocking in these colors. I'm gonna get a little bit closer because I wanna draw the shapes of some of these dark shadows. See her eye goes at that angle. There's a shadow under her sleeve there. Shadow color on the hand. Fingers are warm. Definitely a different tone than the dress. They're hotter and warmer. These fingers, uh, if we have a rhythm with this book, wrap around, they come right in here. Her ear's really hot. We can, we have a plenty of, of chance to go back in and rework this later. But I wanted to get at least the skin tones masked in right now. I'm squeezing in a little bit, bit closer because I want to go ahead and put a little bit of where her nose should go. Her cheek. And she's looking down at, she's looking right here. So if you can think about that as you're painting and work that way to get her head to tilt right, because it's gonna look funny if you don't have the tilt right. The lightest bit of skin tone is on the back of her neck. Oops, too light. Easy to adjust that. It's not as light as the shade behind it. And then her chin is really round. All right, I mixed up a little bit of a brownish color. I had a tiny bit of raw umber on my, leftover on my palette, but I'm mostly using the burnt sienna and blue mixture. That makes a brown, orange and blue makes brown. To put the darks of this hair in. Notice the back of the bun and the back of the hair are the brightest, or the darkest. A little bit of dark right here. A little dark right there separating her collar. I could go ahead and pop that in. <coughs> And then the hair kind of moves in almost a greenish tone right here. If you zoom in on that. I know, would you ever paint hair green? But I want to keep it soft against this shade. I don't want any football helmet edges on it. All right, so I got back for a minute, had an interruption and it's so cool with that blue undertone, but I guess that's gonna be okay. 
I think the cool areas are going to read really cool. Um, I have been putting some warmer greenish tones in the front part of the hair, which seems kind of odd, but I kind of see it that way, and I've got it on my canvas, so I'm just going to do that for now. Got a little bit of a soft edge of her hair here. I'd rather make this all blurred right now. It's so easy to go back in and make a sharp line later and bring something up a little bit more. This little headband of hers is yellow ochre. Yellow ochre or raw sienna. It's kind of purplish as it goes toward the front of her head little bit of a purple color in there. Then there's a little pop of light on the front. I can get that later, but I'm going to try to put a little bit of it in right now. Eh. This feels so much like kindergarten. It doesn't feel like a beautiful painting at this stage. When I get back across the room, though, it really doesn't look bad. And so I'm really thankful for the interruptions today because they've made me get up. And I just keep going without getting up. So it really affects my work not to get up and look at it closer. Now, if I zoom in and look at her neck, I'm trying to figure what what that dark spot is under her neck. Hard to tell. Oh, it's the other side of her of her neckline. Goodness, there's a lot going on here. <coughs> but remember. You don't have to tell the whole story, especially right now. This is the block in. That is all. And if everything is a total blur right now, that's okay. We will have so much fun next week coming back in here and putting the details in, more details in. Her nose, pretty dark. Her upper lip. And her forehead. Remember, keep facing this area right here. If I were painting a flower, I would always know where the center is and everything would work towards that center. So when you're thinking about hands and face and features, constantly think about this area so that your strokes can go through toward that. When you're mowing, they tell you to mow a straight line. <laughs> you look at the far horizon to see aim for something and it you'll mow a perfectly straight line and I think it's the same way when we're painting. I don't care right now if the skin and the hair just sort of melt together that's fine. I do want to pop a little place right here for her lips and they're in the center. She has such a sweet expression. And I'd like to get that, if possible, in this quarter size area. Chin. Think about, this is the side plane and this is the front plane. So these are separate. All right, I worked on that for a minute and I'm getting a little bogged down. So I'm going to move and try to lay the, arm, the arms in. 
<coughs> and <coughs> as I've been taught through the years, it's always a good idea to put the darks in first. So I have a brush with a little bit of a purplish color on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of this shadowy color down the center. If you've shaded a, a cylinder before, you know that the dark is usually right here, then there's light and then there's reflected light sometimes. So this is dappled light on this painting. So you're gonna see some different things going on. There's a warmth along the edge of this arm. And it doesn't come from her waist, it comes from up here. Then it's a more of a fleshy tone down here. And let's see, the wrist comes right along here. This is where her wrist is. And then her hand, it's kind of like a, a claw, really. Most of the time, the first stab at hands, they look like claws. So that's okay. If it's claw-like, you're probably right on target. All right, and there's a feeling of flesh right here. There's two big, bold, light strokes next to this. I'm going to attempt to lay those in, but with all the paint, I doubt if they're going to register very well. So there's one here. And there's one It's part of her dress. There really needs to be some dark under it for that to register, so it's not really registering very well. All right, back to my pretty flesh color, and I used vermilion and naples to get a pretty orangey, fleshy color, which is what I see on her, especially on this side of the arm. Well, that's not exactly right. It's a first stab. It's easy to lose where you are right now because these are just a bunch of shapes and they're not real beautiful at this point. I wish I could say they were. Fingers. There's a little bit of that pretty peachy color on her nose and her face. I don't have any of that in yet, but I do have a mass tone in there for now. So I'm probably piddling way too much on this. But when I put, um, when I put colors in for the arms, I put them in long ways the first time, and then I usually go back and try to wrap the stroke around the arm a bit. All right, so I'm just gonna come in here now and sort of cover some of these areas that I don't really want to be bright blue like this. And I will 
I'll go, I wanna go around the outer area with a relatively clean brush and just kind of study it to see if, if there's a good flow, if there's some kind of rhythm here. So the top of her head, there's a, there's a, there's a bun shape here and there's a rhythm that kind of wraps. In my drawing, I was looking at a really pretty rhythm that goes this way and then this way. And I like that. And then there's another rhythm across her chest that goes this way and this way. And that kind of, I know it doesn't make sense right now, but there is a beautiful line like that. And then there's this other one that wraps like this around the back of her. We don't wanna make her butt too big, but and there's this beautiful fold of fabric here and that kind of follows this whole big S shape. And I think that's part of what's so beautiful about this. the Her posture and the S's that are subtle in here um, so I wanted to kind of go around and soften some of those things in. Um, if it's a blur today, that is just fine with me. I don't want any big, strong, hard edges on anything. I don't think I quite have the shape of this hair, but that's all right. This could be softer and we can scumble some color back over this later, but I think it's prepared okay. Now, I would like to put a few little, um, I'm gonna clean my brush, because I have a certain size of brush I wanna use for this, uh, kind of a long filbert. Actually, this one should work good. And I want to use the permanent rose now, which is one of my favorite colors. I don't get to use it very often. And I'm going to mix it, mix up some permanent rose with a little of the vermilion because it's too purpley by itself. And then I want to come over here <clears throat> and just start to lay this in a little bit zigzaggy and make it just melt. Um... Maybe get some of this yellow, Naples yellow. And we'll go back and put a bright speck of that in later. But just to give a little bit of like the back side of the flowers. Um, there's a bright spot, a real bright spot here by her hand sort of right in this area. I could just make a place for that for later. The book definitely has some bright tones on it and those will go on a lot easier later on when we come back in. The paint's kind of heavy on this book though, so I want to watch that. I don't want it to get too, too thick and paste it on and stand out more than the rest of the painting. Um, that ear's really red. And pop a little bit of red right there. There's some red down in here. And I really just want to imply these flowers. I don't want any detail yet. And sometimes doing painting into the um, wet paint does just exactly what you want it to do. So here's some of the darks over here. Again, it's really drab and dull. So the next time we paint is when we have a chance to, to put the beautiful colors in here. I have lightened my photograph a little bit um, because this is more how I remember the painting, but it's still, um, it's probably even lighter than this in, in reality. So let me get that waistband back in. 
make sure we have a good idea of where this maybe the parameter here of her dress a little bit of a hump there sleeve puffs out goes in a little bit of the front of that sleeve that you can see there's a definite sweep this way for the bodice. All the wrinkles sort of go this way. And then these <clears throat> I want to correct her um, her butt area a little bit because I got going with that S shape. So I've got it sticking out a little too far. So let me correct that real quick and I'll just use a little bit of that background color. There's a rhythm right here at the bottom of the sleeve. Her dress goes like that. I want to make sure I don't have this off. The hump, there's a hump here and then there's some backlit right here. So we'll be able to fix that later. Um, you can see how this first layer can really be a big, super muddy mess. Right by her hand, there's a little fold. I can get, I can sort of put an indication of where these light areas are gonna go later. That would help. There's a piece of one here. There's a piece of one just on the back of this book here. All right. I did lose the shape of this a little, so I'm gonna come back in and get that back, that porch. The light's going this way. And it reminds me, I forgot to put that pretty lavender color in for the shadows. They are the bottom of the fence here, or, or banister, sorry. Bottom of it here, railing. Railing, and then the shadow colors are not quite as dark. But remember that the shadows will be um, in relation to the banisters here. Again, if they're mushy, that is okay. Everything's mushy right now. We can just let it be mushy. Okay, I did see one area that I would like to cover a little better before I stop. <clears throat> and that is the pot. I've got some darks on it. They're kind of orangey, particularly Right in this area, it's orange. A little bit of orange there. Really have a muddy, muddy mess right now. Let me get a smaller brush and come in here and put a little bit more of this um, raw sienna color. Because that's kind of the mother color for this pot. Raw sienna is a strong color. It's not as weak as the yellow ochre. So I'm going to put it on. And everything is way too dark right now, but that's okay. The orange mixed with the raw, or the vermilion mixed with the raw sienna to 
make a little brighter note of this orange. Not sure where that orange is coming from, but it's pretty. Maybe a smidge of it right there. This is a little more of an orange tone down here. A little bit of it there. It's kind of reflected, reflected light on the edge of that pot. It's mostly dark, so the last little bit of it will be some Naples yellow. And then we'll be done. This isn't as light as you're going to go with it. You're going to eventually pop that highlight on there and make it look really shiny. Might even be a little bit of cad, cad yellow. Edge of the table has some. Top of this leg has some. All right, so <clears throat> that's almost everything covered, pretty much. There's a few cool tones in the flowers in the front here, bluish cool tones, but I think with the tone, that blue tone showing through, that should be enough. Um, I think the, the blue's gonna work to our advantage. There's some flowers here spilling over. If you wanna go ahead and just make some little wiggly marks in here for where those flowers are gonna eventually lay. <clears throat> and then the deepest dark in this pot is right here in the center. Pot doesn't look too good yet. And that's one of the most important parts of this whole painting. It's really beautiful. We've, I've got a close up of it that we'll zoom in on when we get ready to work on it. But again, you are preparing an area to come back to later. There's a real pretty greenish color right here on the pot. Ooh. Yeah, don't show this to anybody right now. And you guys are in the, um, for the long haul with me. So we may find that there's a lot we need to fix with this. This may be more than a couple of weeks. Who knows? We'll see. But I think it'll be worth it. It's really a beautiful painting. So... I want to do it. I've been wanting to do it, and I want to make it um, stand out and as beautiful as it is here. I sure wish I knew how long it took her to make to paint it. I'm gonna try to put that light back in here. That defines her head because I made her hair get a little too big and nose here. But her hair, her head, forehead does stick out up here. Sometimes if I hold my brush, yeah, her head is way over. color I need now. I wanted to put some brown right here and I don't really have anything to mix it with to get that dark enough. Lost her headband there, but that's okay. Find it again. So before I would stop with this, um, 
I would go in here and soften because I came back in here and worked on this. So I'll soften this edge out. Again, we don't want a football helmet. But I want to make sure this is so important, this angle. Don't know if I have it or not. She looks like a little baby right now. And I'll go back. You can see where Lillian went back around and worked in and out of this. So it's not just a one chance and then you're out. You can see that there's a lot of angle changes here. The shoulder, the, the arm comes back out. So whatever I do, I have to go back across to get those, those blinds in. All right, I'm making a big mushy mess right now, so I'm gonna stop. But I do not have the front of this face the way I want it. Her hair. Her hair is almost straight right here. You see that? Almost straight. And you have a we have a preconceived idea about how that hair should go. So really look at it and carve it back out. I'm just grabbing any kind of dark color I have right now, not even the right color, but this straight line here that comes straight down over the top of her head. And then the flesh I have to put back in because I keep painting back over it, but her head is right about there. Then back, back and forth, back and forth with this hair. All right, I think I better lay the brush down or somebody will have to come on over and take it out of my hand. Um, it's covered. That was the goal. That's all we're concerned with right now is getting this thing covered, making sure there's no hard edges before you stop. And then next week, put it somewhere though so that it'll be able to dry. And next week, we'll come back in here, oil it in and jump back into a little bit more gratifying part stage.